and your staff in your hand, preparing to leave. Eat it in haste, but it is the Lord's Passover. He's giving them to him right there. It, it, this is my Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite, smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am. I am the Lord. Mm. I am Elohim. Mm. I am Yahweh. Mm. See that word Lord right there? I just thought of something that I shared with Pastor not long ago. See that word Lord right there? Is your word Lord, in all capital letters. Mm. But do you notice sometimes, and, and even in verse 12, it's all capital. You notice sometimes you see the word Lord with a capital L but lowercase letters, right? What's the difference? Oh, it does definitely making a statement. But, but lowercase. Yes, you, you, you remember, I think I've taught this in another class. Um, capital L with lowercase letters is a title. It's like saying Mr. or Captain, President. It's a title. But when you see Lord in all capital letters, that's his name. That's his name. We know all these names. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, El Shaddai. We know all these names and attributes of God, right? So how come you don't see them in the Bible? <laughs> Why don't you see his names in the Bible? You do, you just don't know it. When you see all capital letters, that's his name. That's where one of these attributes go. Now let's get back to our lesson. That's just a sidebar. Little nugget. See, I come to make you rich. You should be happy. I come to make you rich today. I'm giving you things nobody can take from you. It's not going to depreciate. The government can't tax it. <laughs> Verse 12 says, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn. Verse 13 says, and the blood shall be to you a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. This day shall be unto you a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall keep it a feast, an ordinance forever. And then he goes on to tell them, for seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your house. They would go through their house and take out anything that had leaven in it, anything that had yeast in it. Throw the yeast away, anything. Out of their physical houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off. See, what you need to understand about this and many things of the Old Testament and the feast days, they are a shadow. A shadow of things that are to come. You see, they took all the leaven out of their physical houses. What does that mean for us? See, we are to take sin out of our, our house right here. So it's not about the physical house. It's this house. See, it's just a shadow of something what's to come. 
See, understand what a shadow is. I got a shadow here somewhere. There's a shadow, my shadow right there. Now, my shadow, you, it, it just shows you a silhouette. You don't see substance. You don't see color of my eyes, color of my skin. You don't see the color clothes I have on. It's just a silhouette. You could stomp on it, step on it, whatever. It, it does nothing. It's just a shadow. But if you follow that shadow, see, if you follow that shadow, everybody's got a shadow. If you follow the shadow, I see your shadow right there. Pastor, but if I look at that shadow and I follow that shadow, it'll lead me to substance. Because it's attached to substance. You can't have a shadow without substance. So this is just a shadow. So what's the substance? Uh, that's what we're here to find out. That's what we're here to find out. What's the substance? Then you discover truth when you discover substance of the shadow. Amen? Now, we're going to move along a little bit quicker here. I, I need to lay some of that foundation there, all right? Uh, as, you, as, you, as, as this chapter goes on, it, 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 God's going to tell them about the Feast of the Unleavened Bread that lasts for a week. Which one makes it, is it large, is it full screen? The green. There you go. Okay. Now, just to review something that we've done already, here is their civil calendar. That's the calendar of the world. The first month is Tishri. And these are the Hebrew names for the months of the civil calendar. Now, the month that God was speaking to Aaron and Moses was the month of Nisan, or Aviv, which is, you see, it's the seventh month, right? So now here is the religious calendar that God gave them. You see, Nisan, or Aviv, is now the first month. Tishri is the seventh month. Now, God, pardon me? Aviv, okay, in, on, the, on, the, on the civil calendar, Aviv is the seventh month. Tishri is the first month. That's the civil calendar. But when God told them this shall be the first day of the month to you and the first month of the year, this is what he gave them. That was the month of Nisan when he spoke to them. So now their calendar flipped. What was the seventh month is now the first month. And it's, it's springtime. Now, at one time I tried to correlate these months with the months that we celebrate. But it's kind of hard to do. You could do it, but it's kind of hard. You have to really think it through because these months overlap 
two of our months. Because during the time that God told them this, it wasn't the beginning of the, of the month of Nisan. It was within that, within that day, within that month, I should say. And so each one of these months will overlap. Like Nisan is usually March to April. It'll start somewhere in March, but it'll go over into April. You understand? And, and also, some of our calendar months have 31 days. Some even 29. So, as time goes on, it not, it's not always falling on the same time. You see, and so things get kind of shifted a little bit. But all of their months are only 30 days. Only 30. And it's based on the moon, the new moon. The full moon, the new moon, quarter moon, and all that. Only 30, and we have a new moon every 30 days. And that's a new month. Amen? So now, you have the religious civil calendar, you have the religious calendar in front of you. These are things, these will help you out in further studies and things that come up as you're reading the Bible. You can go back and look, well, God said that, you know, what, when was this? When did this happen? Now, the next thing we're going to look at, we're studying the, the, uh, the Passover. But God actually gave them, throughout the whole exile, he gave them seven feast days. Amen? Here's the first four. Passover, which starts on the 14th of Aviv. It's only one day. The very next day starts ha Hag Hamatzah, the unleavened bread. You see, that's what God says. And seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. It's from the 15th to the 21st. Then comes the feast of the first fruits. The day after the weekly Sabbath, doing unleavened bread. Doing that week of unleavened bread. The day after the Sabbath is the feast of first fruits. Then the fourth festival is Shabbat, which is also called the Feast of Weeks. Because it is 50 days after the first fruit harvest. Now, I'm giving all this to you. You may not understand it right now, okay? But I'm giving it to you. You're going to see it. It may take further study. You've got to be hungry. You've got to thirst after God. Amen? Yes. Now, these four feast days are all in succession. As you can see, 14th, Passover, the 15th to the 21st is unleavened bread. And then within that, the, the, the very next Sabbath day, the day after that is the Feast of the First Fruits. And then Shavat, the Feast of Weeks, 50 days after the first fruit. Why 50 days? Because God told them 50 days. He said, you shall count. Seven weeks, seven weeks, and then the next day is the Feast of Shabbat. Yes.
Okay. When do you start counting the 50 days? Is that what you're asking? You start counting the 50 days after <laughs> uh, after the first fruits. Well, actually, see, actually, within this time frame, sorry, within this time frame, um, the first three happen very quickly. You see, within that, between the 15th and the 21st on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, depending on the year, because I remember I told you, because of the because of the time and, and how and how the and how many months is in a day, how many days are in a month for us, you know, you're trying to understand it. Within that time frame, that Sabbat, Sabbat is Sabbath day. Okay? The, the Sabbath day, which is what day? Huh? Yeah, but what day is Saturday? That Saturday is going to fall right there around the 21st, 22nd. Yes, okay, let, let's do this. Let, let's take it from the word of God. Go over to chapter 19. Now, for all through these chapters from there, God is dealing with them on their exit, exodus, on the Sabbath days. And verse 19 says, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the self same day they came into the wilderness. Trying to see what God told them to count the days. Okay. Um, when we go back to this 19th chapter, and it said, and it was in the third month. Because, see, so what is that saying? Remember, God had established a month for them, right? The first month of the year. So now in verse in chapter 19, we're into the third month of that new year. So three months, the third month into that new year, they have they have done the the Passover. Um, the unleavened bread, the feast of first fruits, and now they have counted the week, the 50 days. They have counted the 50 days, and they're into the end of those 50 days. This is when they enter the wilderness of Sinai, and they come to the mount where God first told Moses to go free the children. To go get Israel. This will become more apparent to you, okay, 
as we continue to study on. Because like I said, you may not get it all right now. You, you, everybody's been to school here, right? You don't get everything exactly when the teacher tells you. You have to go home and look at it for yourself. You have to go home and study. You have to open up your book yourself outside of the classroom in order to really get it. Okay? I'm here as a teacher. Let me tell you something about a teacher. My job is not really to teach you anything. Okay? My, te my job as a teacher is to cause you, sometimes to the point of provoking you, to think. Because if you, until you start thinking, you're not going to learn anything. But that's my job, to provoke your thinking, to stir up your thinking, to arouse your interests so that you can, may go and learn. Amen? But this will become more apparent as we go on and we can see right now we're just in the shadow. <laughs> see, and you can't see the details in the shadow. You can't see the color in the, in the shadows. We're in the shadows right now. But this shadow is going to lead you to a substance. Amen? So we've got the, uh, so like, understand also it says the first fruits of the barley harvest. See, God uses the agricultural seasonal type things for his purposes. There are two harvests in the year. There's a spring harvest and a fall harvest. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about these festivals is that there's seven of them, and these four are in the spring of the year. That's the, during the barley harvest. These three, the next three, are in the fall. Num feast number five, when is it? Tishery one. That's in the seventh month, isn't it? That's in the second half of the year. Amen? That's in the second half of the year. And you have the next three feast days. Yom Terah, that's the Feast of Trumpets. You guys ever heard of Feast of Trumpets? Or Rosh Hashanah. And then number six, you have Yom Kippur which is the atonement on the 10th day of Tishri. And then the seventh and last feast is Shakut, which is the Feast of Tabernacle, which is Tishri 15 through 21. Now, the interesting thing about that is the first four are in the first half of the year. And the next three is in the second half of the year. And each one it's, it's synonymous with the spring harvest and the fall harvest. And for each harvest, there is planting, cultivating, rain, growth, and then harvest. Right? So in order to have a harvest, you must have the rain, R-A-I-N. Rain must come on your crops, crops in order for them to grow and harvest, right? Well, the interesting thing about this that God showed me is that in the first half of the year is four. The second half of the year is three. You guys ever heard of the former rain and the latter rain? In the Church of God in Christ, we used to sing a song about that. Bring on the latter rain, you know. They're waiting for the latter rain. Not the former rain, the latter rain. So what is that saying? The last, so, so the former rain <laughs> is the spring. The latter rain is the fall. What I'm saying to you is that the first, the first four free feasts, Christ fulfilled when he first came. The former rain. And the next three, 
he will fulfill when he returns. The latter rain. The latter rain. These three will not be fulfilled until he returns. And each one of these have in-depth teaching in and of itself. The first four are all attached. But these are, these are attached too, but in a different way. But each one of these have significance within themselves, just like they all do. But they come in the second half of the year which represents the latter rain. Now, I keep saying rain, R-A-I-N. But what God was showing me is that when Christ came to fulfill the first four, the former rain, R-E-I-G-N. The former rain. Then he will come the second time, and he will perform the R-E-I-G-N rain when he returns. See, when in the church God in Christ, when they were saying, bring on the latter rain, I, I, I don't know if they really understood what they were saying, but what they were saying was, come now, Lord. <laughs> See, come now. The latter rain. Come rain on us now. You see, that's the latter rain. And there are significance to these three here. Rosh Hashanah is so deep. It's so much involved in Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah represents his actual return. See, the Bible tells us no man, even Jesus says, no man knows the day or the hour of my return but the Father. Okay? But he did tell us also that you could look at the trees and tell what season it is. You could look at the sky and tell it's getting ready to rain. So if you're able to discern the seasons and these kind of things, we should be able to discern what the word of God has told us about his return. <laughs> we may not know the day or the hour, but we know the season. And the season is Rosh Hashanah. How do I know that? Because God, the things that God has given us about Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah represents the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings returning. And he's going to sit and judge. Rosh Hashanah represents the bridegroom coming to a wedding. For, and, and meet his bride. We know that's Christ's return. Ten days later is Yom Kippur, the atonement. And in, in, in the Hebrew folklores and, 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 and the things that they teach is that on, on, on Yom Kippur, see, they have between Tishri 1 and Tishri 10, 10 days, 10 days of fasting, 10 days of praying, 10 days of examining oneself. Because if you have anything against another person, you, this is your opportunity to go get it right, to get it straight. Because on, on, on Yom Kippur, you're going to be before the king and the gates are going to close. You're either in or you're out. And you can't go to the gates to ask him to let you in, and you have not forgiven your brother. That, that's, that's what it's about. That's the atonement. See? Hmm. And then you have the Feast of Tabernacle. My, my, my. The Bible tells us in the end time, they're all going to come up to the Feast of Tabernacle. But then there's a there's a teaching within within the uh, and then John, and, and 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 you have you have to connect Isaiah you have to connect uh, Jeremiah, and, and Isaiah.